Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Wonder Goal, the soccer betting podcast from the Action Network. My name is Michael Leboff, uh, and joining me for this hour, uh, first round of 16 preview for the Champions League. We'll also talk Europa League and, and Conference League a bit. Our Anthony DeBundo and BJ Cunningham. Um, we'll, we'll do a quick you know, overview of, of the futures board as we head to the, the pointy end of the competition, as we like to say. Uh, then we'll get into the four matches on Tuesday and Wednesday. Tiptoe around some Europa League and Conference League matches uh, and then get out of here. But before we do all that, I will remind you that Wonder Goal is proudly presented by Bet365. And Bet365 does not do ordinary. It believes that every sport should be epic, every tournament, every game, every point, every play, from the moments that are legendary to the ones that fly under the radar. See for yourself when you sign up today with promo code ACTION and you'll get $365 in bonus bets when you bet just $1. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. You must be 21 or older, and you have to be present in Colorado, Iowa, Kentucky, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia. And if you are someone, you know, as a gambling problem wants help, please call 1-800-GAMBLER in Colorado, Kentucky, New Jersey, Ohio, and Virginia, or 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, before we, we drill down on the matches for Tuesday and Wednesday, let's take a look at the big board, the futures markets for uh, the Champions League in 2023-2024. Manchester City, wouldn't you know, they are still your consensus and clear favorite at plus 187. At Bet365, Bayern Munich is the second choice at 4-1. to one. Right behind them is Real Madrid at plus 550. So is Arsenal. PSG is 12-1. to one. Inter Milan, 16. Barcelona, 18. Our boys from... Uh, other boys from Madrid. Our boy, Diego Simeone and Atletico Madrid. They are 25-1. to one. So is Dortmund. Napoli sitting 50. Leipzig, 66-1. to one. So is Sociedad. Porto. 100 to 1, Lazio, 150 to 1, PSV, 150 to 1, and uh, FC Copenhagen, 500 to 1 to win the Champions League. Congrats to them for getting through to the knockout stage. Um, tough draw, though, uh, for them. Anyways, let's take a, a quick run around the horn here. If you had to, or if you are betting uh, a team here, Anthony, we'll, we'll get to you last because we know where that's going to go. Uh, you alluded to it on uh, Thursday morning's pod, but BJ, anything that piques your interest here? I really like Inter. You can find them at 22 to one. Obviously they went to the final last year. And quite frankly, I don't think that city was like completely dominant in that match. And really what it comes down to for me is Inter is actually a lot better this year than they were last year. So far this season, they have a plus 1.21 expected goal differential per 90 minutes. That is second best among Europe's top five leagues behind only Bayern Munich. And they've shown that their tactical setup plays really well in a tournament like this because Inter doesn't need to have the ball to be successful. They're very, very good on the break. They're actually better when they're playing in transition. And this season, they brought one of Anthony's boys over from Gladbach, Marcus Turam, and he is having a sensational season and is a big-time upgrade from last uh, season when Zeko was playing uh, alongside Latero Martinez. So now we're in a situation where they unfortunately are going to drew Atletico Madrid's, but I still think it's a great matchup for them in this first round. And this is one of the best defensive teams across Europe. They've only allowed 10 goals in Serie A this season. They only allowed 5.3 expected goals across the Champions League group stage, only allowing 0.68 non-penalty XG per 90 minutes. They are really good in set defense. They're very good on the break. And when they need to when they need to hold possession, they've shown that they can do it as well. They've done it in Italy time and time again. But for a team that really matches up well with anybody in this tournament, at twenty two to one, I think is a fantastic price on a team that went to the final and has gotten better since last year. I am going to go with uh, PSV, 150 to one. Looks like the best price you can find out there. Uh, this comes down to just their their draw. I think they have a pretty winnable two leg match uh, against Dortmund, who haven't exactly set the world on fire. They were, I think, you know, full value for getting through that group of death with uh, Milan, Newcastle, and PSG. But uh, I think that you know when when you're when you're looking for a long shot at this point in the competition, the first box they need to tick is do they have a decent chance to to get through. Um, so I've I like Sociedad this entire competition, but I'd rather bet. 
and and these were the two long shots I was kind of deliberating between um, Sociedad and, and PSV. And I, I would rather go with PSV just because, you know, I don't want to take on PSG with, with Sociedad. I'd much rather take on Dortmund with, with a PSV team who weren't particularly sharp uh, in the group stage. They got battered by Arsenal, but uh, in, in the first leg, we're, but we're still able to get through. They did get through with a, a minus goal differential. I think it was uh, negative two, but most of that came because they got battered by Arsenal 4-0. Um, they were fine against uh, Lons and, and, and Sevilla. And uh, I've got no problem backing a team that just doesn't give up any goals in, in the Eredivisie. Like, they're, they've been so good. What, I think they've conceded nine on the season. They're trucking those everybody lines. in yeah. Netherlands right Yeah, it's now. just they're just going... Uh, they're running rough shot through that league. Whether that translates over in a, when you're stepping up is remains to be seen. But uh, we've we've seen teams really surprise, uh, especially at this stage of the competition. It's not out of the question that that a really kind of kooky team gets through to even the semifinals. And they'd be my pick here uh, just because of uh, who they have in uh, the round of 16. If you had switched Sociedad with PSV, I would be giving almost the same exact uh, argument for uh, Real Sociedad. Anthony, uh, your thoughts here, anything you're looking to back um, on the futures market? Yeah, so there were <clears throat> two teams that popped out to me immediately, one of which was Inter, which uh, you know famously rode with last year all the way to the final and uh, lost in heartbreak. But I agree with BJ's point about Inter. Like, I think if you're looking for uh, a team that I will be betting when we get to them next week to advance. Minus there's a minus one thirty on them to advance. I think they're clearly better than Atleti, uh, more than the market suggests over two legs. Uh, Taram, not just Taram, but also Jan Sommer. So this team, like I, I feel like I have to, out of principle, ride with this team because of you know how they've embraced two of my favorite players from from Germany and he's been a really good shot stopper. It's the main reason why they've overperformed their XG, but also their defense has taken a step forward this year. Chalanolu has been really good, uh, more ball winning from him. And then of course, Taram is a huge upgrade over Jekko, like you said, BJ. So I don't disagree. I'm already holding PSG from pre-tournament. I don't really feel great about it. It's sitting at the same number after we got through the group of death. And I don't really see them making a deep, deep run here unless Mbappe does a madness, which like could happen. Mbappe and Donnarumma, carry this team to a quarterfinal upset. And now I'm holding, you know, a pretty good semifinal ticket uh, on PSG. But I think the best value bet on the board right now is the second best team in this competition at the fourth best odds. That's Arsenal six to one, because first of all, you know, the way the draw set up here, city got a pretty friendly draw. Bayern got a pretty friendly draw. Real Madrid could slip up. It wouldn't shock me if they lost to Leipzig. We'll talk about that soon, but I, I kind of think that the favorites here got a pretty friendly path to the point where we're going to have, you know, the, the four top favorites most likely in the quarterfinals uh, paired up with, you know, either Barca or Napoli, Inter or Atleti, uh, and, and then like a PSV dark horse. Maybe you get a, a draw there that uh, can help you out. But I think when you look at Arsenal, and this is a conversation we've had about them all season on the pod and, and BJ and I have gone back and forth. We've had our little, you know, tit for tat. I take a victory lap. He takes a victory lap. What's been consistently true about this team is that they are the best defensive team in Europe. And that is Arteta has prioritized control to the point where there will be matches in the English league in the week to week where they don't get three points enough. They settle for draws because their attack isn't that explosive. They've kind of piecing it together without like a top, top striker slash goal scorer. And that has hurt them in the league. And you've seen it at various times where they've kind of gotten soccered and struggled to create, et cetera, et cetera. And in a tournament setting though, like let's look at what Arsenal has done to the top teams in England. When they played City, I know City was a little shorthanded for that match, but less than one XG. They played Liverpool at Anfield, held them to about one expected goal. They just played them again last week, held them to, you know, 0.4, 0.5 XG. Pretty impressive. They shut down Brighton at home. They shut down Newcastle for the most part outside of like one fluke chance that ended up being a tap in. So this is a defense that has proven that it can go up against the top teams in England and pretty much just shut them down. And in a tournament setting, I think they're more solid defensively than Real Madrid for sure. Uh, I don't really have faith in Barcelona because Barcelona is stuck between, 
you know, not being able to defend and then just not having a great consistent attack when they try to defend more. They, they, they haven't gotten the balance, right? I think they're kind of flawed. Napoli has taken a step back. You look in Germany, you know, Leipzig's clearly a tier below. Bayern is interesting. We've talked about Bayern a ton. I still think uh, I'll take a full strength Arsenal's defense over Bayern, but uh, that would be a, a really fun matchup. So I think I've got the second best team here and a team that sh- that's proven it can it can compete with City to the point where uh, at 6-1, to one, I think Arsenal's the my favorite bet on the board, and then I bet them to win the Champions League, even though I don't think uh, they should be one of the two favorites for the league. I think that in the Champions League with Liverpool not there and with just how much England is dominant right now, and I do, I do firmly believe this, uh, that they're the best bet on the board at 6-1. to one. It's good to see you come over to the uh, the right side of history. It's good to Again, see. I was never against Arsenal in the oh, Champions League. Oh, stop it. I'm against them in the league. I've, I've said that so many times now, and uh, Liverpool will finish above them, I think. But No. And, and City will. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's just they're, they're a team that's well-built for this competition right now, and uh, they're healthy enough, right? That was the biggest thing is, you know, can they stay healthy enough? They've got Porto in the round of 16. It would shock me if they couldn't get past Porto. Uh, and then I'm in the quarterfinals, and it comes down to the draw. Hopefully, we get uh, one of the friendly ones. I would love to see uh, Arsenal, you know, take on like a Barcelona. I think that'd be a good matchup for Arsenal. Uh, so it should be fun. Okay, so that does it for the future segment. Uh, on to the matches. We'll start with Tuesdays, uh, and we'll start with Man City as a minus three fifty favorite on the road in Copenhagen. FC Copenhagen is 10 to 1. Uh, the draw here, 4 to 1. I think this is probably going to be the least interesting of the four matches on um, Tuesday and Wednesday. I've got nothing here at all. I mean, you want to bet Erling Holland to, to score a hat trick, go right ahead. But uh, Well, well, well. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to bet Copenhagen here, but credit to Copenhagen. They were the only team, and they did it twice, to hold Bayern under one expected goal. Like, they've been okay in a low block, but yeah. there's no way. I can get behind them here. So pass, but it's uh the question is, does that say more about Bayern or Copenhagen? That's I don't, I don't know. That's a good question. Because that group ended up playing out kind of weird where, yeah, that, you know, United cratered early. Uh, Copenhagen had that dramatic comeback win in the park and to beat them. And then, you know, the last two matches, Copenhagen played at Bayern and, and like you said, got a well-deserved draw and then outplayed Galatasaray uh, at home as well. So at home, in the Champions League, they have been a very difficult side to uh, break down. And that's been true even last year. So remember, these two teams played in the group stage last year. Mm-hmm. It was Dortmund, Sevilla, and, and City, and Copenhagen. And Copenhagen got totally rinsed in all of their away games. But at home, they had a positive expected goal difference. City did pick up a red card early. Uh, there was a missed pen as well. Like There was some you know, nefarious action you know, breaks that went. Copenhagen's way to keep that match competitive, but they weren't played off the park. Uh, so if you want to get crazy, I think like a Copenhagen first half, maybe just, you know, first half under, if you think they can hold them out for the first half. Uh, but ultimately I, I agree. Like I don't really see the path to them. One, one thing can. to note with uh, Copenhagen as well. The uh, Danish league has been on break during the winter. They don't play. So they've basically just been playing friendlies up until this point. Their actual real last real competition was that match against Galatasaray. So um, they have, you know, they've played again, they've played three friendly or, you know, six friendlies in between that uh, period of time. But, you know, not having consistent matches and then gearing up to play the best team in the world might not be the best spot to back Copenhagen. Yeah. And if you remember back, like price perspective, uh, Copenhagen was catching almost two, one and a half against Bayern. They've gotten a market bump, but now they're only at one and a half against City. So, you know, they're, they're, they're clearly there's been some improved uh, market rating on this Copenhagen team, and you'd be kind of buying high to buy them here. Yeah, nil 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 first half as is maybe interesting. Um, okay, the other match on Tuesday I think is. Quite fun to dig into. That's uh, Leipzig at plus 220 at home. Madrid, Real Madrid traveling plus 110 as a road favorite. Uh, the draw here is plus 260. This is a, a, sh- a show that we've we've liked Leipzig kind of big picture before the Champions League. We were uh, unsuccessfully betting them to beat City and such like stuff like that during the group I stage. I did that again in a heartbeat though, Michael. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah it was fun. It was always I fun. I just remembered I have a ticket on them too. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, that are the that'll... current odds? They are uh, 50-ish. 50, are they yeah, 50? they're 50-ish. All yeah. right, well, we got value then because I've got 66. So oh. We're, we're oh, no, sorry. Good. They are 66 to 1. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, great. So if you want to jump into team, the now, you can do it. Advanced. Yeah, another team that advanced from the group stage and their odds did not improve. Right, and the group was, and pretty, I mean, the, and they've been good. all right in Bundesliga. I don't think up to 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 standard, and their current form is not all that great. Uh, they just stopped a uh, four match winless streak um, with a, a two nil over Union Berlin, but like. I don't know. This feels like the type of situation where we'll we'll tell you that Leipzig is the value side, and, and you should back them to give Madrid a go. But this is where uh, Real Madrid kind of just has excelled uh, for a decade uh, in in this. In the, I mean, more than that in this tournament, and, and it feels weird. I actually like the draw a bit. I think that I I wouldn't be shocked if uh, both. I mean, Leipzig should be. Uh, better defensively but but it's just not worked out that way uh in Bundesliga this season and Real Madrid could easily just shut this game down if if they wanted to if it was like you know 1-1 maybe maybe Leipzig goes up early Madrid fights its way back into it to to tie it 1-1 and they're like let's just take the draw back um back home uh yeah, I, don't, I just don't think a draw would be a terrible result for 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 either side uh, in this one, BJ. So I I think it's it's going to be a little more cagey than uh, perhaps you guys do, but um, that's that's the only thing I'd be close to betting here is is the the draw plus two sixty. Yeah, I uh, actually do like Leipzig plus a half quite a bit here. I have this projected like dead on as a pick'em. So we are recording this on Thursday because obviously the Super Bowl is going to be on Sunday. So. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen in Girona and Real Madrid. Hopefully there's a ton of goals. But uh, it came out that uh, Carvajal and Chumeni are going to have to play center back pairing against Girona, um, which is not ideal against them. So we'll see uh, if Rudiger is actually healthy enough to play in this match. And if he's not, then what you're losing, you know, Chumeni is probably their best ball stopper in terms of a central midfielder. Because if they're going to play Cruz and Modric there, don't do a lot of ball winning, you know, obviously great passers, but if you have to play too many at center back, that's kind of concerning given the way that Leipzig want to play, which is very direct, right through the middle, 4 2 2 2 formation. And really, what Leipzig are trying to do most of the time is just get the ball to Xavi Simones, who has been incredible for them this season. And, you know, for Real Madrid, we've talked about this quite a bit as well. Their form away from home in Europe has not been great for quite some time now. This season, when they've played the two uh, better teams in their group, Napoli and Braga, they won both the matches away from home, but they lost the expected goals battle. They played Leipzig last year, and they lost 3-2 in Germany. And even if you go through their results, I know they beat Liverpool and they beat Chelsea last season in the knockout stage. They lost the XG battle in both of those matches. So it's not like Real Madrid is is you know housing teams here on the road comparatively to a team like Bayern or Manchester City. Even if you just look at pure expected goal differential, Overall for the season, Leipzig's at 0.72 per 90. And Real Madrid's at 0.83. There's really not that big of a gap between Germany and Spain anymore as there has been in years past. And for Real Madrid, you know, one thing that they've really been struggling with lately is defending on set pieces. You've seen it time and time again. They've played Atletico, what, three times in the last month, it seems. And Atletico just keeps scoring off of essentially corners against them. Well, Leipzig has scored 11 goals off of set pieces in Germany this season, and there's top six and XG per set piece. So I really don't think there's as big a gap as the market is suggesting here, especially if Real Madrid is going to have to play the center back pairing that they're going to play against Girona. So uh, I do like Leipzig quite a bit here, uh, plus a half. The best price out there looks like it's about minus 135, minus 140 in that range. Um, minus 145 would be my cutoff there, but I really do like Leipzig to at least get a draw here in this first leg. Yeah, I just have major concerns about Real Madrid's defense, and they don't press, right? So uh, they rely on being good box defenders, and when they don't have any of their best defenders available, it's just not very good. And, you know, you mentioned it, BJ. Like, they were fine against Atleti, but again, like, offside VAR bails them out on the first corner, and then they concede late in stoppage time anyway. Uh, it's been a defense that's given up one and a half, two XG to most competent teams they've played. Leipzig has to come out uh, pretty aggressively here, and uh, you mentioned it as well. 
early in the season, it's kind of been a tale of two seasons. The first half of the season for Leipzig was they were scoring a lot, but they weren't creating a lot. Then they went through a stretch where they weren't scoring at all, but they were creating even more. And it's kind of evened out kind of beautifully here, but it's still a very competent attacking team with, with Chavi Simon, Simons and, and Opanda, like they're still getting really impressive numbers. Uh, they were, you know, largely uncompetitive uh, with City in that match. That's the only you know kind of red flag that I have for them. But I think City is so much better at controlling games than Real Madrid that they'll give Real Madrid will give Leipzig their opportunities to have attacks. I think Real Madrid just generally in the Champions League bets on the fact that they're going to be better in the big moments. They're going to finish their chances better than you. They're going to save their chances, uh, your chances better than you will. Uh, and thus, I think they are flawed. And I, 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 you know, it's a wonder goal special, right? Me and BJ say, well, the numbers say we should fade Real Madrid in the Champions League, and then we all lose. Um, but I'm going to take the team totals for, for Leipzig. I like first half team total over plus 115, so to score in the first half. And then I also like uh, team total over one and a half for the game at, at plus 140. Uh, I just think that the market still respects this Real Madrid defense a lot more than I do. I think structurally it's very average. And now talent-wise, it's, it's, it's below average uh, given the personnel problems. So... Leipzig's going to get their goals here. I, I think they'll probably concede a couple too. I think this, in theory, right, like first leg, it could be cagey. It could play out that way. But I don't think Real Madrid's really capable of playing that style right now. So uh, as a result, I will take Leipzig team totals. Here we go again. Uh, yeah. So 2-2 two, two draw. Who says yeah, no? Th- that's what I'm saying. I think it's going to be one of those where, where the draw is just in play the entire match because it's you know two one or one nil and whoever falls behind has a chance to uh, to nick it back. Um, all right, Wednesday now, Lazio are five to one at home hosting Bayern Munich. You'd have to lay minus one eighty eight on the road with Bayern, and the draw is three to one for this one. You know that uh, there's no love lost between you two and, and Lazio over the years, uh, but there's also no love lost between all of us and, and Bayern. Um, and Anthony almost kind of had a, a, some sort of intervention with us on uh, Thursday morning's pod about how it's just we should just start betting on Bayern. It's just so much more fun to be on their side than going against them every week. And uh, he's going to try to convince us here. Yeah, I, I think this is a huge difference in class. And when Bayern has played in the, I know they've had a couple of bad results this year that haven't held up against Copenhagen and Galatasaray, especially on the road where they haven't been as good as normal. But I think there's a massive, massive gap between these two teams. And uh, I'm willing to lay the money line here in the first leg that Bayern comes out uh, and just beats the shit sh- out of them. I, I think Lazio, if you look at their results, even it's gotten worse as well. For Lazio, but they have the market hasn't really moved on this game in the last month. I bet it like a month ago. Here's what Lazio has done coming into this match. It's pretty pretty alarming. They uh, you know beat Lecce in a game where they had less than one expected goal created at home, one nil. They got beat three nil by Inter. It's kind of a similar situation to what this is, but they were outshot in the Inter match twenty three to five. They did not get a shot on target, and you would expect them to have some type of response off of that game. They hosted Napoli. Napoli did not have Kovarczkelia or Oshimen, and what happened in that match, Lazio managed 10 shots. They put none of them on target. So another game with no shots on target, two straight games, they couldn't score. Surely you'd expect Lazio would get then a response going on the road to Atalanta. No. They created six total shots in that match. They put one on target, and it was the penalty shoot, uh, penalty kick from Chiro Immobile. Uh, so they have not created over one XG in any match in Italy, and I know Italy has been a little bit lower event, but in any match in Italy for the last month, basically. Uh, they, they've played, it is now, six straight matches without creating a full expected goal, not including penalties. They have failed to score more than one in almost all of those matches, and even defensively, you know, what has been a good defense in the past, like they played Atalanta, they played Inter. They were not uh, competitive in those matches. And, and even the Napoli match, a totally shorthanded Napoli, uh, they, couldn't, they couldn't break away. So I think you, the market should have responded to this. The market should be consistently downgrading this Lazio team off of what we've seen. And the market has not moved. Uh, Bayern is still sitting at minus 180, 185. I'm willing to lay it. Uh, is it square? Maybe a little. But 
I think that this Lazio team is a paper tiger waiting to get exposed. This is a Lazio team that was badly outplayed by Feyenoord in the group stage in the in, in both meetings uh, and managed to get through despite just meh underlying numbers and they can't control games. They don't press. The Immobile is looking old. So I think Kane and Sané just kind of have their way here. PJ, you got any thoughts here? Yeah, I mean, if I were to play anything, I would agree with Anthony. I'd probably just lay Bayern minus one and a half and try to chase a big price here because, you know, as Anthony has laid out Lazio, there hasn't really been a performance where you walk away and you say, oh my gosh, like, this team is actually pretty good. We'll see what Bayern looks like against Leverkusen on Saturday. Hopefully they win. Hopefully, if they look great there, I yeah, I, this is this is going to be just one-way traffic. So I agree with Anthony. If I were to play anything, it'd be Bayern one, minus one and a half. Yeah, we actually saw this a few years ago in the Champions League where Lazio was like kind of a middling Serie A team and they got through and then Bayern just crushed them. And that was a Lazio team that at least had like a younger Immobile and a good Luis Alberto. Like this Lazio team just doesn't – there's nothing they do in attack that's particularly inspiring. Good luck with Sorry Ball trying to build out of the back against Bayern's press. That's all I'll say. They're going to have yeah, they're, a they're lot of problems be, with that. be able to control this game yeah. pretty, pretty easily. All right, PSG and Real Sociedad. PSG minus 163 at home. Sociedad traveling as a plus 425 underdog. The draw here is 3-1. to one. A couple things I want to note. One thing is that if, if Sociedad gets back home down 1-0, I think I would play there. Um, basically any future across the board. Um, because I think that they're live in this, in this two-leg matchup. I think that they are a team that, that profiles well in tournament play because of their their defense, their ability to kind of just grind out results. They are, I, I think they've drawn, what, six of their last nine matches in, in La Liga. They are they are just a draw machine uh, this season. Uh, the overall record, nine wins, 10 draws, uh, and four losses with a, a plus 11 goal differential. You look at the, the underlying numbers, it's defensive regression uh, should negatively should come for them, but it's still not bad. Like they're, they're a good defensive out uh, defensive outfit that's been their profile for a while. There's just a lot of things that strike me as a, for, a with this team that kind of profile as as the teams we've seen advance, um, kind of sleepy teams advance through to the quarterfinals or semifinals in, in years past. Um, so there's a lot to like here. I think that they're also you know plus four twenty five is a pretty decent number. Uh, to take a shot on with with the way they're going to want to play this game and just turn it into as low event as they can uh, against a, a PSG side that Anthony was talking about. Like, it's just going to want to try to get Mbappe the ball and, and let him do his thing on, on his own, which, hey, it works. They're they're a pretty chunky favorite for a reason. But there's just I think there's a lot of, of ways you can still use Sociedad um, and, and find value, uh, whether it's sitting sitting this one out and then backing them uh, at a bigger number in the the home leg, whether it's betting them uh, futures, I still think like you you can make a pretty solid argument that hey, if they get through this one, the number's going to crater. So why not just do it now? Long winded way to say I, I like them here. Uh, I'll be back of them on the money line, and I'm going to kind of just stick with them until they are uh, punted out of this competition. BJ, what do you think? Yeah, I do like Leipzig here, or excuse me, not Leipzig, Real Sociedad here quite a bit. Um, so here's the the thing with with Sociedad. They have been, you know, it, last year they were, you know, they've always been a great defensive team and their offensive numbers have taken a bit of a dip this year. Uh, but what has remained true for them is they are the best pressing team in Spain. And that is a big thing here against PSG, who under Enrique are going to play the ball out of the back. And we saw it once in the Champions League. When Newcastle was, you know, at least somewhat of a semblance of the Newcastle team that we saw last year, they pressed the hell out of PSG. They caused so many problems and they beat them 4-1. Right now, Sociedad is first in La Liga in both passes per defensive action and progressive passes and dribbles allowed. They will press out of a very narrow 4-4-2 and their principles essentially are to dominate the middle of the pitch. Now, that's going to leave Mbappe out. If they try to play Mbappe out wide, it's going to leave him in some one-on-one situations, which is obviously frightening. But honestly, wherever Mbappe is on the pitch, he is frightening. And he is a game wrecker, and that's just something you have to 
kind of. <laughs> yeah, I think Mbappe is priced in. Yeah, it's, he's just priced <laughs> in here. That's basically what it is. Um, but what I will say is that Sociedad is a unbelievable defensive team. Only 0.99 non-penalty XG per 90 in La Liga this season. Didn't allow anybody, including Inter, to create over one expected goal against them during the group stage. And although their offense numbers have taken a little bit of a dip, a, a lot of their bad, their worst offensive performances have come in these last four matches when they, you know, when Kubo was away at the Asian Cup with Japan. He has missed five matches this season for them. In those five matches, they have they are averaging 0.58. Yeah. XG per 90 minutes with him in the lineup 1.37 not so bad so it's not like they're an elite offensive team but at least they're good with him in the lineup and he is somebody that can obviously uh, do a lot of game wrecking. looks like screener might not play in this match for PSG which would be a loss for them I only have PSG at minus 114 they're kind of just on cruise control in 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 league on and they don't really face a lot of teams that press with the intensity uh, and effectiveness that Sociedad is going to press them with really the only team that kind of comes to mind in France that can press the way that Sociedad does is Nice and Nice beat PSG and they cause a lot of problems pressing them. So I think this is a pretty decent matchup here. I think Sociedad can cause a lot of problems for PSG's buildup. Um, and yeah, Mbappe might wreck this game, but I think it's a little high here on PSG. So I like Sociedad plus one best price, best odds you can find on that are minus minus one twenty two. I agree entirely. I'm on Sociedad as well. Uh, I like this team in the tournament setting for the same reasons you know we talked about my top four tickets on life support because they can't beat anybody. They just keep tying everybody. But uh, yeah, I mean, defensive press is everything. They will be able to, I think, do enough to shut off the easy access to Mbappe. Of course, he's going to get his time and his moments and is probably going to score. But I think Sociedad can, can keep this game more competitive than the market suggests. I think they're certainly live to pull off an upset in this round. Wouldn't shock me at all. Granted, they're like the group winner, so they're uh, you know expected to be pretty competitive. They're a slight underdog to advance. If if you were looking for a two advance underdog in this round, I think this is probably the most interesting one. Yep. Uh, we'll talk about Barca and Napoli next week, but uh, that that one like neither team really has an identity right now. This one to me, like Sociedad has a plan. They know what they're going to do. And even though they don't have as much, you know, frontline talent in attack, like they're probably the, I don't yep. want to say the better team, but they're competitive enough to make this interesting. So I like Sociedad. Yeah, they, they and, and like I said, I think that they're, you can have some kind of fun game theory or handicap, pencil and paper handicapping with, with the Sociedad team, because in all likelihood, the, and, and as the odds tell you, like they're going to lose this match, but they're probably going to lose it. As BJ said, they're, they're minus 122 plus one. So they're, it's it should be tight and and at that point i think that they are still live like they could back to uh spain trailing the the aggregate by one goal this team is still uh still in this thing so i uh not just my favorite underdog to advance but also just in entirely um kind of infatuated with this team uh and and not going to give up on them if they they you know burn me here as a plus 425 underdog i i think that there's uh plenty left to say about uh, Sociedad as long as, you know, and now we say this and PSG is going to win 4-0 Mbappe, Hattrick and, um, well, There's basically like three ties that are, you know reasonably competitive where it's like the favorite is under minus 200 to advance right, you've got PSG this one where you can get Sociedad as high as plus 140, um, you've got Barcelona, Napoli and then you've got Inter, Atleti um, you know and P PSV uh, Dortmund as well. So I guess four of the ties are interesting. And whoever wins those four will kind of go up against, I think, ultimately the seeds of the next round, which is yeah. like Madrid, Arsenal, City, and Bayern. And then, you know, depending on how they get matched up, we could get one of those surprise semifinalists. Yep. Okay, uh, let's quickly talk about Europa League. If you guys have any best bets you want to give out there, Anthony, we could start with you. Well, let's, let's go to the futures board uh, because so the Europa League, second year of the new format uh, where we have 24 teams in the knockouts. And so 16 of them will play in the kind of two leg playoff over the next two weeks. Um, so we've got some interesting matchups, you know, the, the biggest one, the biggest two on the board, for some reason, these two teams just keep getting paired up against one another. Uh, first, they play in the conference league final, uh, devastating for Feyenoord. They lose to Roma and Mourinho. And then they played an epic two legger 
in the uh, quarterfinals of the Europa League last year where Feyenoord was up 1-0 uh, and then had a 2-1 aggregate lead until Dybala scored in stoppage time and then and then Roma kind of beat the, the brakes off them in, in extra time and went on to win that one. And now they're going to play again in uh, the round of 24 uh, of the Europa League. And I like over two and a half at even money. And I've been talking about this repeatedly now. Um, just I think the market is – this Roma team is not playing it the same way as they did pre-Mourinho. And you're not going to get your traditional – tournament Roma where they're going to go on the road and not do any attacking whatsoever. Uh, Feyenoord at home this year has been an absolute truck against, you know, they play Lazio. They play such an open style that Roma will get their chance on the break. Uh, And I think Feyenoord will be happy to play a more open kind of back and forth match. You know, keep in mind, they so they played the cup final, they played the first leg, but the second meeting between the two teams was very open. Both teams took a ton of chances. Um, And so I think you're going to see some of that in this one. So over two and a half at even money, and then, so the odds board, there's two overwhelming favorites, and two of the you know six best teams in Europe are, or maybe seven, are in this tournament, right? So you've got Leverkusen and you've got Liverpool. Liverpool at plus two fifty, plus two twenty five, like is just not really enticing to me because I think they're going to be in the Premier League title race, and I think if you go look like where they're going to play some of their matches, there's going to be cases where Klopp has to make some decisions about who gets prioritized because they don't have, I don't think, the depth. To, to go all in on all, all four competitions, right? Because they're in the Carabao final. They're still in the FA Cup. Um, they have to make some decisions kind of on how they're going to manage their squad uh, in Klopp's final year. So I, I have no real interest in betting Liverpool. Uh, I think we mentioned, I don't know if we mentioned on the show, but we talked about Leverkusen as Europa League threat pretty early on in the year. Their their value is gone now too. Uh, and I, I do think that, you know, they should probably be a little closer to Liverpool to win it just based on, both have buys and both are, you know, playing at an elite level in Europe right now. But I think the best team kind of on the odds board, if you're looking to go down the list, I know BJ has a team too. I kind of just go process elimination, right? Milan is 10 to one. They're in the knockout round right now. I think play Ren, who's not a pushover, not a, not a bad team. And I don't think Milan is really any good. Uh, defensively, I've gone into that enough this year. So Milan, no, thank you. Brighton at 12 to one. I don't think they're well set up for this because, um, they, you know, have a high ceiling, but their defense just feels a little too leaky. Don't trust the goalie at all. West Ham 12 to one. No, thank you. Roma 16 to one. If you told me, yes, Roma will advance to the next round. I think Roma 16 to one is intriguing, but they have a tough, I mean, they're pretty solid underdogs at Feyenoord in the first leg. They're basically a coin flip to advance. So, uh, you know, Roma's 16 to one, you can get Feyenoord at 40 to one when Feyenoord is basically a coin flip to advance against Roma. It doesn't make a ton of sense from an odds perspective, Benfica 20 to one BJ. Uh, we were just talking about them off air, no interest in them. Atalanta is kind of the team I settled on at 25 to one. They've, they've played elite defense in Serie A this year. They, their attack is trending up because the Catalare has taken a real step forward. Uh, you know, you compare their numbers underlying to Milan and to Roma. There's not a huge difference between the three teams. Except that Milan's ten to one, Roma's sixteen to one. Both are playing in the knockout round, and Atalanta has a bye to the round of sixteen, where they'd be seated. So I think Atalanta twenty five to one is is where I've settled here. Uh, I think that you know Italy has done me well, relatively in these knockout events the last couple of years, and I think that the league as a whole has some decent depth. So I don't, I, I believe it. I think you know they're they're uh, a live team just because of how much improved their defense is this year. Uh, anything for you here, BJ? Yeah, just for a couple uh, bets, uh, I like Sporting quite a bit at minus one ten against Young Boys. I think it's a terrible matchup for Young Boys, and Sporting is a significantly better team. I'll get to them in a second. Other best bet will be Galatasaray Sparta Prague over two and a half. We should not be setting Galatasaray matches at two and a half. Always should be at three. Um, and one more. I have a fun one for everybody, and you're going to listen to this on Monday. And I'll be honest, I might need Tony Politics to step in and and, and research this for me. Um, there is an ongoing police strike going on in Portugal right now. It caused all their matches to be postponed this past weekend. Benfica is playing Toulouse at home, and they are massive favorites to advance. There is a precedent that has been set in 2021. If you remember, Anthony, Tottenham had to forfeit a Europa Conference League match against Wren because of COVID-19, and they didn't have enough uh, of a police presence to actually secure the safety of the match. So 
there it's seemingly right now from what I've read on Thursday morning, there is no end to this police strike. So that means that Toulouse could be awarded a three nil win on the road and take that result back to France. They are currently three to one to advance. I would not bet them this first leg because I'm guessing every sports book will avoid it uh, if uh, if it's a forfeit. But if it's to advance, I'm not sure if they can actually avoid that if there is actually a second leg being played. So that is the other one. In terms of futures, I really like Sporting Lisbon at 33 to one. Uh, I think they have shown throughout the last couple of years in Europe that they are very, very capable of taking down some of the top teams. If you remember, they beat Tottenham during the Champions League group stage. And they knocked out Arsenal in the Europa League uh, knockout stage last season. And really what they their setup is very similar to, they take like a mixture of what Galatasaray has done, combine that with actually building out of the back with the principles that you know Brighton and uh, Leverkusen do with the box midfield. And they have unbelievable attackers uh, that can get forward. Uh, Jokerish, who came over from Coventry City, has been incredible for them. 15 goals, 0.86 XG plus XA per 90 minutes. Incredible runner off the back line. They want to make quick vertical passes to get going forward. And that sets them up really well as a team to play when they play against some of the big boys. They're dominating everybody in Portugal right now, plus 1.41 XG differential per 90 minutes. Uh, again, I just talked about this police strike. They're on the road against the young boys here to start things off. So hopefully they can get a big result here because – and maybe they can figure out a way to actually play this in a new. So, so I, I really need, I need, I need a, a, the strike to continue, because BJ just said bet against this Portuguese team because their strike is this. But hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! But then I know the they're going to have it sorted out because the sporting's coming. It's more up likely the that the strike is going to end in like two it's... weeks than it is um, on uh, Thursday, Anthony. Uh, so, I'm gonna have to do my research. So I mean, Tony my, Politics uh, step in and help me out. But anyway, right yeah, 33 to one. They got young boys. Like it's it's a very, you know, I'm hoping that they can figure out something. Uh, but yeah, I mean, maybe you can just wait and just see what happens with the strike. But um, <laughs> solidarity to all the the Portuguese. Uh, this, is a pro, this is a pro labor podcast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But hey, these are the things we have to do. We, you know, sometimes we got to cap geopolitics on this podcast to, to try. Oh, it's to the best. Just wait till stuff. we get to. Uh, just wait till we get to our our, our European uh, previews uh, championship. That's right. Previews in, exactly. In That'll be fun. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, Sporting thirty three to one. If uh, the strike ends before their home match against uh, Young Boys. <laughs> <laughs> just a great caveat. Okay. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, hard to. Well, I, I, hold, hold on a second. So, so yeah. Port, Porto, I, I hadn't even thought of this now. Porto is hosting in two weeks as well. Yep. So great for the Arsenal Braga, ticket. And Braga is hosting. Yeah, uh, get, that, get that Arsenal ticket in before this becomes mainstream right. news. Braga you know? is before hosting. On to, the, to, the, to the Portuguese police strike. Yeah. Um, who is... By the time this podcast is out, they'll probably have it resolved. And it's exactly. That's why that, I got to put a copy in there. there but hey, so. it could happen. Parlay, Perfect. Michael. Michael, Toulouse and Karabag to advance the, uh, Portuguese, the uh, police yeah, strike parlay. The Portuguese police strike parlay. The PPP. Um, that's, why you, that's why you come listen. You know, I, and, and I hope that there's a lot of people that are listening to this maybe for the first time because the, the NFL season ended and uh, they still want to you know, bet and whatever. And now they're, they're set up to, to expect to hear uh, this kind of stuff every, every weekend. You won't be disappointed. You won't be disappointed. Um, so, after we have now unturned every stone uh, that we can to to go through the uh, European matches coming up on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, uh, let's just wrap it up with our favorite bets um, for this week to come. BJ, you can go first. Leipzig plus a half, minus one thirty five against Real Madrid. It's honestly a pretty good matchup for them. Real Madrid might have to play a center back pairing of Chuameni and Carvajal, which is not great for them, not just because they're bad center backs, but they're losing too many as their best ball-stopping midfielders. So if they decide to play Cruz and Modric in the midfield, well, for a Leipzig team that really wants to attack you vertically and transitionally right through the middle of the pitch, that is not a great scenario for Real Madrid, who honestly hasn't been that great of a defense, and they're really 
bad on set pieces. And that's something Leipzig has done really well this season. Scored 11 goals off of set pieces, sixth in XG per set piece in Germany. And Real Madrid's form away from home in the Champions League hasn't been good for a long time. I know they beat both Napoli and Braga this season, but they lost the XG battle in both of those. They lost to Leipzig last year in the group stage in Germany. So I really don't think they should be an odds-on favorite here on the road. So I like Leipzig plus a half and minus 135. I like uh, Sociedad on the money line, plus 425. Uh, we talked about it. This team should uh, provide plenty of value, I think, across both legs uh, and maybe beyond in this tie with PSG. So uh, this back the defense of stalwarts from La Liga here. Anthony, what, what about you got? I'm going to go with Bayern Munich, minus 180 on the road. Lay in the juice. Don't care. Uh, I think Lazio is a fraud, and they've shown it as much in the last month. The market has continued to stay pretty steady on this line. I disagree with it. I think Bayern rolls here and uh, sets up uh, an exciting quarterfinal. One more thing as well. Um, you know, last year we did one future from each. I'm going to make it a, an even three. Arsenal six to one. Atalanta twenty five to one. Lil twelve to one in the Conference League for me. Uh, so hopefully we can make it a, a clean, clean sweep. That means you can book all three of them to lose the final. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so book those three to lose in the final. PSV book them to to win it at and uh, book the uh, Portuguese police strike to end. I believe what on Sunday. Uh, just in time for BJ's just, future. Yeah, show. maybe maybe <laughs> two's in time two, to lose all yeah. these. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. no, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. But um, the uh, we, we do we do have to cap geopolitics on this podcast. Unfortunately, yeah. they'll be bringing they'll be bringing BJ. BJ's face to the table at the uh, negotiations. Be like, we just <laughs> let, we have a we have a solid deadline now. Um, BJ will be. At we got to make sure this guy loses his year. money. Yeah, this guy from this guy from Iowa. Um, all right, uh, that'll do it for BJ, Anthony, and myself uh, until we get back to to preview the upcoming week in uh, the Premier League. So, for BJ, Anthony, and Michael, thank you for listening. Good luck with all your bets in Europe. This week, and thank you to our sponsors, Bet365. Thank you to our producer, Noah, for all the work on the back end. See you next time.